I was 39 and I had a slap tear in my shoulder uh, and I had ripped off my biceps tendon. And I sat in his office and I begged him to fix me. I, I swear I was almost on the verge of tears of begging him because I said, I'm not ready to, to not pitch. At 41, I got drafted to go play professional baseball. I went overseas to play in the Israel Baseball League in 2007. Had he not fixed my shoulder, there's no way that I could have competed at that level. Fast forward 11 years, I remain the head coach of the Israel national baseball team. We met uh, on the ball field 26 years ago, and uh, I was up at bat, hit a ball to right center field, crushed a ball to right center field, was on my way to run around the bases, and the umpire went, you're out. And when I'm out, he said, yeah, that guy out there caught the ball. That was him. We sort of met after that game, and, and as luck would have it, uh, teams changed over the year, and he ended up on our softball team. And you know, our friendship started there and just kept going. He's saying right center field. That ball was hit to left field at White Plains. That's where we were playing. Yeah. And he crushed it. And it was kind of like back to the field, Willie Mays style, and I ruined his day. And, and, <laughs> and, and from there, um, I, I remember we shook hands after the game. I couldn't tell you who won or lost that game because it didn't matter, uh, but I apologized to him when we were shaking hands. And uh, not long after that, we, be we became friendly. I don't want to get too corny here. Um, but me being here and, and doing what I do um, is because of Dr. Levy. My goal is to get back on the field and hit and throw baseballs and softballs as, as well as I can. And being an athlete, you know, Dr. Levy wasn't just a softball player. I mean, he competes at everything he does, and I think that's what keeps him hungry and learning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I think, I think er, Eric, brings up, Eric brings up a very, very important point. What, what started me off in, into looking at sports medicine as a profession, uh, I, I, I was playing ball, and, and it's the, the common story. You got hurt. And, but the one thing that happened when I got hurt and was not able to play for a period of time, you learn very quickly how important it is to you, what it meant to me, how I fit into society, how I fit into the social order in high school. So many of the kids, um, in, uh, particularly the, the, the young people that I have the opportunity to take care of at Montefiore, a lot of those kids, um, athletics is gonna be a ticket to a university. It's gonna be a way to get an education. And that's a, that's a critical thing. Think how, how life-changing that is. So keeping them on the field, enabling them to be able to participate um, in so many ways helps young people uh, work through their lives. And, and I, I, you know, I, I, I've always found that very, very satisfying. It was different for me um, because I knew someone actually cared about me. Um, not just as a patient. Um, he was going to look after me. Um, and then years later, my children and, you know, my entire family and friends and so on and so forth. It's like anything else. You, you, you set goals. You set personal goals. And, and if the goal was to get back on the field in, you know, a month or two months, you know, we would kind of formulate a plan as to how to do that. And, and is it realistic and, and can it be done and, you know, or are you going to get hurt again? I think one of the exciting parts of looking after athletes, looking after people like Eric, it's a highly motivated crew. 
Um, it's, you know that the, the real challenge after surgery is not will they do your rehab, but will they do your rehab too much? Everyone that I've engaged over the course of, I'm gonna say the last 18 or 20 years has been nothing short of uh, professional and welcoming. And uh, for me, that's why, you know, I, I choose to be at Montefiore. I didn't pitch for 12 months. And I'm in Florida playing in a tournament. And I ended up throwing a complete game, nine innings, but a one hit. Uh, we beat this team from Puerto Rico. And, and then uh, I got a phone call. <laughs> and I got a phone call. And this is the way it goes all the time. All the time. Uh, it's really all the time. He doesn't, he doesn't pitch every week, but then I get a phone call. And it's, hi, guess what, guess what I did today? Well, what did you do today? I played baseball. Oh, well, great. Oh, I pitched eight and a third. Oh, great. How'd you do? Is your arm still attached? Um, and, 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 and this goes on. And, and this has gone on now. Well, that 14 was 14 years. Yeah. 14 years. It still goes on. I get a phone call. I just got just, a phone call from Florida that, you know, he was pitching again. And one of my issues, and this may come off as being funny, but I, I, I'm so serious about it, is I don't think that you quit because you get old. You get old when you quit. And when I, again, my dad passed when I was 11 years old. So I had a catch with him. I played on the same team with both of my sons. So that, 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 that's a little bit more than having a catch with my kids. Adam, boy. me to be almost 53 playing in a I played in a collegiate baseball league last summer. I was the oldest guy in the league by far and uh, and I was successful in the league. You know, why am I thinking about quitting? You know, maybe the new motivation is hanging around long enough to play with my grandkid. But I, I there's there's no way that I'm I'm even thinking about quitting. 